Hi everyone, Soul Silver Seventeen here. Let me get through this like usual. I do not own these pictures. I mean, own this picture. This is not a paid video, and I'm just using this thumbnail. All right, okay. So, um, it. I was gonna make this last night, but the I was having troubles like with where did I want to go with this. So, uh, yeah, I didn't. I know I want to go into Demanche. You know, basically it's around to pick up girls in the dungeon. But the fact is, I didn't know where I wanted to start. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I kind of know where I want to start. Um, it's after Bell gets the knife, so after he basically kills the, basically, big giant ape. Basically, Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but I didn't know where I wanted to start with, so we're just going to start this off. Alright, so, let's just say this. Basically, at the Tomb of Nazareth, basically, Ainz is basically thinking. He's thinking of the situations that has been going on. And what's been happening. He does not understand the concept of basically... Obviously, the god, the gods that basically brought me here. He doesn't know what's fully going on besides, well, what he knows what I basically have said. So, but he only knows that I'm basically Izakai. So, in the room, there is Shaltir, Albedo, Narble, and Gekaitis. Because Gekaitis was there for Shaltir's, basically... Asking to become my familiar. Reasons, I mean, reasons that have baffled, basically, Abedo's mind. When she was told was because it's been three days and she was told, basically, just yesterday. Me, and then no one's ever, and basically, him as Momon with Narble, basically, being Nave, have not seen Zero, a.k.a. me. Because I've been, basically, making my armor for three days, well, for two days. And I'm basically trying to figure out how can I make, basically, a suit. Basically, I got Iron Man's intelligence, so why not? <laughs> um, also, though, during those three days, I kind of also came up with the idea, why not also get some Batman intelligence? So, I do have that. Since Batman had no powers and such. And I kind of would remember, during the three days, too, I could basically try to combine these armor with, basically, with the armor base I want to make. And, um, with some, basically, some, with a Batman style to it. And then, because of Predator tech. Basically from Predator, the movies and game. And the comics. I, I basically seen the games and the movies. So, I do know it's very durable. So, yeah, I mean, Luna's been with me making the armor. So, we do basically just have Ainz, so like... <sighs> Three days without seeing Zero, and we've been having a hard time, basically, trying to get up to Plat- well, basically, Alicalcos, which, basically, about was like, yes, Shaltir would have been an excellent way to increase our weight to, for that to become even faster, but at this moment, we're, it's hard for you to even come that way, Lord Irons. He goes, yes, my name Momon's going out there. For the more quests I do. Hmm. By the way, Shaltir, I thought of your punishment. Well. For basically causing some trouble. For me, at least. But I do not want to say this. Well, correction. I do want to say this to you. It was also my fault to blame for not realizing this could have happened. But at least we know now it's basically an item that basically you wear. It has a dragon look to it. Which basically Shaltir just nodded and he goes like, Narbrel, have you thought of basically his proposal? She basically goes, yes my lord, I have. Basically, if it's to help basically Nazarek, I will join him. Which he basically just nods and goes, well then, I will, only, well, I will give you only this one last order. Which that would kind of surprise Narbrel. She goes, but Lord Ani, goes, Basically, he holds up his hand, she stops. He goes, You will basically follow his every command to the T. And you will basically protect him if needed. 
I do not know the full capabilities of his powers. Which she does not again, which basically Alberto's like, Lord Heinz, why would you? He was, which he just says, You must all understand, he's alone here. And besides, if we show a path of good faith to him, maybe we can be allies in the future. And besides, the more knowledge basically he gives us, the more, how should I say, preparedness we could have. But I want to know what is the plan of this goddess that brought him here. And along with. Wait, um, hold up. Alright, just had to make sure of something. Basically, he was like, and I would like to know how does he really truly know us? If he basically will be forthcoming and tell us, then we can understand. Which, basically. Alberto and them just not, but I mean, Kukai could be like, so, Lord Ainz, if I am basically understand this correctly, you want us to basically show kindness to him, even though he has, well, helped us out, but he has also done nothing wrong for us basically to have an ally in the future in him. But even though he may become, he wants to be an ally, or should I say, you want, want him, he may become an enemy. Are you willing to take that risk? Which, basically, this kind of, you know, intrigued, basically, Ainz. He goes, Kakaitis, have you basically been talking to Demirge on this topic? He goes, yes, Lord Ainz, I have. I was just, could not get it out of my head. But these past two days, though, I've been basically debating with him on everything. Which, that actually was kind of surprise. Even Alshaltir, Narbro, and basically, Abedo. And he goes, and what is basically Demir's thoughts on this? He goes, we should basically kill him as quickly as we possibly can before he becomes a problem. But, hmm, if what basically Shatir told us yesterday was true, it may be a harder task for us to actually kill him. Which basically he does not. He goes, yes, he's a vampire. Three days ago he became it. So that... Basically, the form he took to defeat Shaltir wasn't even a vampire form. It was more demonic. As basically, Abel just nods. So, she goes, So, Lord Ainz, what is Shaltir's pun punishment? Which he basically goes, quite simple. For, hit, for her to be his familiar. For him, basically, to have her by his side. And only, basically, is called by me when she is truly needed. I would not have her basically be gone from basically Nazareth. But her duties as a familiar is above all else the most important thing at the moment if she basically wants to be. As basically Shaltir just nods. And basically Alberto is like, are you sure about this? I mean, he could just be, he goes, Alberto, we'll talk to him soon. And you'll be there to basically talk, see him in person. She just nods. Basically, I want to say this. All of a sudden, he gets a message from like, say, a scout that was basically flying in, up above the clouds, basically. So no one really would see it. And he goes, what is it? And he, basically, he hears this creature goes, my lord, I found him. He's in, basically, Riestes. I do not know why. In which he's actually kind of curious. Meanwhile, me, I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, this prince is going to really hate me. Wait. Hmm. I wonder. Alright. So, what I do is basically I go into the, basically the Darksiders, basically, skill, and actually get possession, upgrade that, so I can actually possess, possess someone, and then even knock them out. So, what I do is very simple. I literally basically would be like, okay, time to test out this basically new enchantment on this outfit. By the way, this is my adventure outfit that I got, my thief slash assassin look. So I basically put it on, and I basically immediately become invisible. So basically, Ainz will show basically what's happening, and they don't understand what's going on. They don't even know where I am, but she goes, curious. It seems like his outfit, or his basically equipment, has some sort of enchantment on it. Which basically is kind of be very surprising. But yeah, so what I do is, I basically sneak into the castle. I'm literally, I am actually kind of like stealing a few things here and there, little trinkets that basically looks like worth a lot of money to me. Basically, even can tell it. I'm like, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is going to be good enough for me to start my own little business. Yeah, a little shop in Rantel. Hmm, maybe even hire a few people to actually... Yeah, that would work. Basically, me basically thinking like that, like, or maybe I should start like Hajime did from Shield Hero. Travel a business? Eh, I like do adventuring. Eh, maybe a little bit of both. So basically, yeah, I basically just take a couple of things, and then I see basically Climb with Her Majesty, Renair. And I'm like, perfect. So I basically I use the dark, I mean, the, yeah, basically that's the mark of the outsider, and basically just take possession of him, which he basically stops, and basically she was like, Climb, are you alright? And basically I'm like, yes, princess, sorry. I felt a little uneasy for a bit. She goes, are you all well? I mean, basically asks, are you okay? He goes, like, I am fine. Maybe basically tell him, well, maybe basically go to where you want already. I want to basically sit down as soon as I can. Hold up. She was like, oh, yes, we're going to visit Gazm Stronoff. Basically talking about that person that came into my room. And she basically, I just nod. Basically, I'm thinking to myself, did I really terrify her? That much. <laughs> Basically, while we're watching, I'm like, Princess, my ass, did he steal anything from you? To which she goes, I I told you this already, Climb. He goes, I, ah, uh, my apologies. My memory's a little bit, you know, fuzzy because it was late at night. She goes, oh, yes, um, he did. He basically took some of the precious to me. As I'm just thinking, basically, I kind of will use some of my vampiric powers, even, I mean, I would test this out, basically, I would test, like, some random civilian, actually, to see if I can read people's minds with, you know, vampire, you know, vampire powers, and I'm basically, like, seeing it, well, doing it, I was able to, I'm like, so I'm basically just reading my shoes, like, if basically anyone finds that out, I could be ruined, I mean, I can't let all my plans go to waste, <sighs> my precious climb, if you knew, you would hate me, but you'll soon come to love me, maybe I'm just stopping, I'm like, Jeez. Weird. I'm just thinking in my head. So I'm basically calling. He's like, what's going on? And basically he just sees me in front of the seat. Which I just see him like, oh, hey. Well, I'm possessing your body. Um, don't worry. You're going to be knocked out soon. I'll knock you out and stuff. Um, here's the thing. We're going to have to talk later. He was like, who are you? And he tries to get up. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm still wearing a mask and a hood, basically. So we basically follow, well, you know, I basically follow the princess to Gazlin's drone off, basically, room. As then, basically, I kind of just ignore the talk, but I basically pick up the detail, because I'm looking around it, you know, to see if there's, like, anything that, you know, is basically people will be able to find us. You know, not find us, me, hear us. Which there is none. Which I'm mentally grinning, as basically, Gazlin's is like, I'm sorry, princess. We still basically could not find any way how he would got in. She goes, oh, I see. Thank you very much. Um, climb. In which I go, yes, princess. She goes, I'm going to be going basically to my room again. And I'm like, ah, yes, before I, will you mind waiting for me outside? But she goes, ah, not at all. And basically, she, but before she goes, she goes, why? He goes like, well, I want to basically talk to basically Gaznov about a few things, if you do not mind. Again, my apologies, Princess. I shouldn't be asking you this. I am just a lowly soldier. But she goes, no, 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 oh, it's fine. You're doing this for my protection, right? He goes, yes. She goes, all right, thank you. So she's a little basically, you know, slowly opening the door and, you know, being more careful as she closes it. As then all of a sudden, I look at Gaznuff, which he looks at me, he goes, like, you're not, you are, as I just literally put on my finger to my mouth, like, giving the shush motion. As I basically, all of a sudden, basically, I basically just appear out of climb from behind, basically not get him out. You know, basically, he's having a hard time, which Gazlin says, basically, just see, I'm not trying to kill him, but not him out. Basically, it's like, all of a sudden, he's down quick. As I put him down, immediately put up a privacy seal, basically activate it, and I'm like, whew! <laughs> Man, that was close. <laughs> which, he's like, what did you do to him? He goes, oh, just possessed him, and, uh, you know, knocked him out. Don't worry. I'll wake him up, you know, soon. Don't worry. Because he basically is about to take out his sword. He was like, please, <laughs> guys, enough. Let's have a little chat. I only came here for that. And 
I did steal a couple of things, didn't want to leave empty handed this time. Which I do take off the mask and he just see you know, in the hood, which he just sees me. He goes like, Who are you? He goes, Not a pro it's none of your business to know yet. I have a little thing I want to basically ask you. I just I pull I go into a chair, we sit down and you know, right in front of his desk and he sits down. He was like, What is it? He goes, Well, I am who I am. I am technically stealing, I am a thief, but I have come here with a vital information for the kingdom's survival, you can see you can say basically. You see, there's a threat, an unknown threat to the kingdom, of one person that's willing to do everything as I point to climb for him. Which he's basically shocked, he's like, who? He's well you could say she is madly in love with him. To the point where it's an obsession. She's willing to betray everyone in this kingdom for that. For them to be together. So, I am here, though, to also to see if you will join me. He goes, join you? He goes, yes, a team. Not, well, <laughs> a team where basically I will allow my members to still work at their current job positions. I will not let them basically leave. You'll still be the head knight to the king. But you will basically follow my orders, not to the T, but more like if I basically ask for information on certain individuals, that is all I would ask of you. But under my protection, though, my rule, basically as my team member slash, you can say servant, or whatever you want to call it, I will protect you. There's a death I do not want you to have, Gaznuff. And, as a sign of good faith, as I say, all of a sudden I pull out a book, basically, I basically just place it down, and go like, this is a book I've carried with me to here. There's another one, but I cannot give you this, because a certain individual may find it and try to get rid of it. Which, Gaznuff basically look at it, and he's basically seen a lot of, basically, like, little pages sticking out. He's like, what is it? He goes, that I cannot tell you until, as I bring out a knight piece, you become my knight. But he goes, a chess piece? He goes, yes. There's a lot to explain, but I cannot tell you right away. I am truly sorry for that. I have a deadline today. I have a leave. It's just a gut feeling. He goes, hmm. So I still will be his allegiance to his majesty. And all you ask is information. No task of me to know. Your allegiance is to your king. I respect that. But I will ask only on information on nobles. If needed. He, goes, he looks at me curious. goes like, what for? He goes, simple. <laughs> to see what I can do to cause a little bit of chaos in the kingdom. If I want to, that is. But he goes, if you want to. He goes, yes. There's a certain events that are going to happen here that I want to try to be a part of. Or should I say, to try to cause someone a little bit of anxiety and fear. Which he just looked at me in shock. He was like, who? First off, do you accept to become my knight? This information can basically save your kingdom and your king. In the near future. This one decision, guys, enough. He goes, you swear to me you will not come after. He goes, I swear I will not come after your king, this kingdom. After all, I am quite fond of it. It has very nice people in it. Well, in a rental. So, is it a deal? As I stick out my hand towards him, which he basically takes it. Basically, like, pleasure doing business with you. Now then, this will not hurt. You are becoming a reincarnation devil. You are still human, but you will have wings. Basically, your strength, your speed, and your endurance, and your dexterity will increase well, dramatically. And you will be able to basically use more magic than you could originally, which is actually kind of shocking. He goes like, also, there are a few things that are going to happen, but I do not have the spells, basically, to teach you. Or to find out, basically, what's your magical affinity, I will basically have to talk to your king later about that, as I return from my business. By the way, after I basically give you this piece... I will basically warn you of something that's to come. Which he just looks at me and nods. So basically I take the piece, put it at his chest, and then it suddenly absorbs into him. 
And, like, you know, basically, a little power surge goes through him, a little grunt and pain, then all of a sudden, devil wings come out. Which he goes, I thought that would be more, like, dragon like, or reptilian looking, I guess. He was, yeah. Not just pure black and no indication of it. It's like a wing. Which all of a sudden they disappear. He was like, strange. I still feel normal. Just a little more powerful. He goes, yep. I figure as much. So, I basically show him the book as then he's looking through it. And he goes, basically, he goes, my precious time. Basically, that first line and all that and blah, blah, blah. Basically, he would recognize it's basically Princess Renee or Raiden. He goes, this is absurd. How many? Oh. Oh, these are the missing people. She... She killed them. Just because she, they were making fun of Climb? As he, he's looking at Climb, and he goes like, Yes, he's in a dangerous situation. He goes like, I have to... Basically, I basically, you know, put my hand in the bucket. I'm like, no. He goes, huh? What do you mean? He goes, you're not going to help him. <sighs> he's already in her web of basically belief. I can only basically tell him so much, and then he can basically tell her. She'll be more cautious if basically she found out who I am. And knowing basically what I can do is more of a problem, you can see. Which he goes like, so what do I do? He goes, well, in the future, I'm going to become a shadow, well, a necromancer, you can call it, but a shadow monarch, which I can basically bring the dead people back to life. If you train him basically good enough, no matter what, I basically would bring him back to life. He goes, why? He goes, what's the worst thing for a betrayer to her kingdom to get as a punishment? What's the worst thing that could ever happen to her? And then he basically looked at me and then his eyes went. He was like, seeing the person you love and care for so much to die right in front of you. Like, exactly. So you're just going to keep him alive to... Kill her? Well, kill him? And especially killing her? He goes, well, yes and no. I kill him, but then I resurrect him. And he's basically a little human and such. But, I mean, that's the only way I can think of that would cause her the most amount of pain and suffering. Or, basically, I can just have him basically end up betraying her. For right now, though, that is my main goal. Which he was like, but he's, he's a good guy. I know he's a good person. But, things can change. Besides, I could always basically fake it. He goes, huh? He goes, you see, at least I make a shadow clone. Basically, he just eyes one. He goes, I could always basically make a clone of him. As then he goes, huh? As then basically, I say perfect copy on Gaznuff. As then basically, that appears, but then I basically shove my hand right into the Gaznuff clone. As then they basically would just... Poof, just, you know, go on the ground dead. I have many different ways of cloning. Then I use Predator to basically take the dead body and the blood. He was like, uh, uh, did you just kill me? He was, yeah, pretty much. I mean, Oz and Troop, though, was a perfect copy, a clone, a copy of you. I know basically that doesn't make no right, and Oz and Troop, that felt weird doing it. He was, then why do you, to prove a point? If it's necessary, I would do some things that even I would question my own humanity over. So, if you... You wouldn't have done that to make a point. You only would... What, as you said, you only do that to make a point. It goes, exactly. I see. He goes, yeah. So, technically, he'll be around. But... <laughs> she won't know. She'll think he's dead. Because... Wait. This was her. Uh-huh. My main plan. I ain't that cruel, the guy. So, here, as I basically make a perfect copy of the book, as I take the original, put it back in my inventory, I'm like, now you deal with that while I go deal with the princess. As I basically, you know, unseal the, you know, privacy barrier, and then he goes, wait. You know, well, I'm about to, I mean, he goes, wait. How do I get in contact with you? Hmm. I'll get in contact with you. You wait for my orders, alright? He goes, uh... I have no choice in the matter, do I? He goes, nope. I don't really know how to do communication spell. So, sorry about that. He goes, <laughs> you just came here blindly just doing what you want. He goes, exactly. That's how I roll. 
it's way more fun. As I take the privacy barrier off, you know, I, you know, basically, and I possess basically Clem's body as I get up, as I say, thank you, Lord Strong. Well, thank you, Lord Gaznuff. As I say, walk out. As basically, Renera's like, Clem, was everything all right? Was, yeah, sorry about that. There's a lot of things happen, Princess. So she just nods, and we basically go back to her room. As then, well, she goes, Clem, I'll be basically back real quick. As I, alright, so she basically leaves into a room. As I literally basically stop possessing, you know, Clem, basically still not that. I basically carry him into a chair. As then, basically, what happens is this. As I basically would just kind of see a paper on the table, I'll write on it, basically. You should get better guards, princess. They're easy to get past into your room again. Also, this little knight of yours. <laughs> what a beating little dog. And then I just leave. And I open up the door and just jump out while basically activate the invisibility. When the princess Renera come out, she basically climb on a chair, knocked out. She's like, climb? She basically looks around and she sees the window open. She's about to go to it until she sees a note on it. And then she basically... Unknowingly, like, you know, her body is shaking. She grabs it and she reads it. She drops it. And she basically goes, guards, guards! <laughs> basically, I'm, like, already out of there. I'm just kind of laughing. I'm like, oh, man, that was hilarious. <laughs> ah, I can hear her from here. Man, she's an idiot. Smartest, per smartest person here. Even more paranoid now. Ah, that's enjoyable. So, after that... I basically would run back to basically Irantel. As every time I think, man, three days. Well, three days of me basically figuring out what type of armor I want to make next, and then uh, those two days Luna basically make me cr help create armor. One looks like DMC Dominic Christ 3 Dante's jacket mixed with aloe cards with a basically a lightweight armor that basically is black. Like, seriously. Basically, the material she basically made said, made me basically make is like regular clothing, but it's way more durable. It even has regeneration properties to it. Just like my freaking Castlevania Dracula's outfit mixed with Virgil's. Each one that basically can absorb basically different properties. One can handle physical attacks easily, the other one basically handles magic attacks easily. <sighs> I mean, both of them basically have regeneration for the armor doesn't get destroyed. I mean, well, it doesn't really rip it. If it does, it just regenerates. Man, that's really annoying. Basically, when I get back to rent hell, basically, I kind of just stop. You know, I'm just kind of walk in, into it. As then I see Momon and Nabe. I'm like, Momon! As basically, I have my, you know, whole entire thing on, outfit on, still. You know, basically, you're like, ah, Zero! I was looking for you for the past three days. Where were you? It was like, eh, I was busy. He goes, ah, I see. We do a little flashback just for a few minutes where he goes, when basically, I mean, shouts, here's like, um, what did he do? My Lord Orange was like, I do not know. But we had to go back to, well, we're tell Nabe, which all of a sudden, you know, clothes appear on, basically, well, the armor appears on, basically, Ains, and then Nabe gets her, well, Narbo gets her clothes. As then basically, yeah, they appeared over warp gate, into, into basically the room that they basically have in in Rantel. So yeah, that's how they got there. He was like, "I've been wondering. We let's have that talk." Like I said, he goes, "All right." Where he was like, mm, "At my home." It's like sure. So basically, I walk him back with the tavern. Basically, they were in. You know, basically, can we go up to their room? As then, basically, we warp to Nazarek. As then, basically, I'm like, ha, huh, gave me no choice in the matter. As I'm slow, basically, I'm slowly reaching into, well, to my inventory, on my right, my left hand, well, my ref, blah, my left wrist, basically, where it is, to get out, basically, Zongetsu. As then, I remember, wait. Oh, yeah, I remember I almost forgot about that. As then all of a sudden we have a flashback. It was like the third day when I just sleep in. And I wake up I'm like, ugh. Wait, I fell asleep while I, when I was trying to, oh yeah, read. Oh man, why does Linda want me to learn how to sew? 
even basically make fibers into metal and basically put enchantments on them. As I basically walking over into the kitchen, basically grabbing an apple, as then I basically see a note and song gets to Luna again. Basically, I go to it like, "Hey, Zero, it's me, Luna. I asked the god basically to, how should I say, put some runes plus enchantments onto you, Zongetsu here. Basically, there's a few combination of runes that basically will allow you to switch into different swords. I took the liberty of basically combining them with Zongetsu." So, you're basically a dragon, mind control, sword, whatever you call it. He goes, eh, I'll probably just call it Spiritual Dragon. Good name. As I basically, like, then I hear basically about the Rebellion and Yamato to basically be combined. Along with basically your two guns from Alucard with Emily and Ivory from Dante. So now basically your weapons are combined. So you basically can switch into them. And any other weapon you're going to get is basically, you'll have to do it yourself. This is basically just a little thing, basically, because the gods don't want you to basically do it yourself. At least then, if we don't say this is less bullshit for us than for you. Because some of them are basically are literally panicking, which I actually just chuckle at that. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm like, I literally grab Zongetsu, I'm like, hey Zongetsu's. Well, oh, Zongetsu, which both of them answer, I'm like, so is each sword you basically can transform into your soul there? Which basically I just hear it and like, yep. It's like, cool. So basically, switch into Rebellion, switch into Yamato. I'm like, how do you guys feel? Because like, well, there's a slight difference to the world. Well, basically where we are, but we feel a lot more powerful than usual. I'm like, good. Basically switch back and I switch it just into the Spiritual Dragon Sword that I made. Hey, how about now? They're like, hmm, we feel less powerful, but a lot more basically where we basically has control over somebody. Hmm. And I can make it like Aizen where basically someone looks at it, just the blade itself, I can basically control them. That would actually kind of neat. So basically, I just hear chuckling from them. So yeah. So basically, I kind of, you know, go over to my side as Aizen will be like, oh, nope, nope, not here for attack, I swear. Which I basically would stop, and I'm like, okay, so why am I here? Is he take off the mask and the hood? Basically, he goes, <clears throat> as then he goes back into his iron persona, you know, with no helmet on. He goes, Nabe, can you please get, basically, shout here and Albedo? Which, basically, she nods, and she does so. He basically would be in his studies, and basically, I sit down right across from him. As we wait a few minutes, he was like, so... Is there anything you want to tell me? He goes, hmm, I guess not really for now. I mean, I probably would want to say some stuff while, basically, they're here. Which is, ah, yes. They should not take that long. As basically, they teleport to the room with, with Nabe. Well, Narbo there, I mean. As, it was like, well, now, since everyone's here. <sighs> I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. He goes, sure. First off, I already know you are isekai But did you know what happened to your world? Or what happened, basically, how you died? He's like, oh, yeah. Somehow the world was going white. He goes, huh? Bright light, don't know what happened. It's like everything was erased. He goes, ah. Uh. <clears throat> so... About this goddess of yours that you called useless. Question, not that useless. It's like, ah. Is she planning anything for you? Goes, yeah. Sort of. It's up in the air, really. He goes, huh? I honestly am still trying to figure it out. But I mean, she helps me out a lot. She always wants to take care of me. She literally is always trying to make sure I'm always well protected. No matter what, and basically she just deals with my BS. It's kind of weird. Which basically I uh, just look at him. He's like, I see. So is there anything else I need to know basically about her? He's like, yeah, because of her, I have all these other gods and goddesses basically l looking at me, basically taking notice of me because of my power. He was like, which basically I've caught Shaltir, Abedo, and Nabe off guard. Which goes. 
Wait, other... Yeah, from different worlds, I guess. Man. Uh, so far, only solo level and stuff has happened, but I'm praying that nothing else will happen. It's like, like what? Zombie apocalypse? Origami? Wait, origami from God Eater coming along? He was like, origami? Like, these weird creatures basically made of oracle cells that uh, eat anything and basically ravage the planet. Only God Eaters can basically defeat them. He goes, ah, how did you, he was like, I can't explain everything, it would take too long. He's like, is there anything else for is that? He goes like, oh yeah, Monster Hunter. He goes, huh? Monsters from basically a world where people hunt them down. Basically, they're, they're animals, you, you basically are really just going to call them, but they're so destructive and different that you actually can call them monsters. Which he was like, I mean, which basically I'd take a paper and pencil. He was like, can you draw it at least? He goes, I can try. So basically, I go from memory. And I want to say, it's a pretty close representation of a Raffalos. He was like, that, that looks like a wyvern. He goes like, it technically is a you know, it is, but that's a monster and monster hunter. You hunt down those beasts and basically you carve them and basically turn them into basically weapons. <sighs> If they said they always bring those here then, that means they're less destructive than the zombies in the origami. But still, they're going to be hard to kill. Which Irons is basically just thinking. He was like, how would they do that? He goes, they're gods. And goddesses. They, they can literally pluck something out of basically another world if basically they have some type of god from that world to bring it into this one. He goes, well, with their reason, entertainment, trying to see if I can live or die? I don't know. Honest the truth, all I know is I have a goddess, basically, that cares for me, and for some reason, I'm a nobody, really. Then, basically, I have another god, who, well, you can call him a deity, or basically above all gods, called Chaos, who I literally became a servant of. Just this the day I fought Shoutier. Just because I needed to basically fight her, I literally had to... Become more than human. <laughs> I mean, I think to myself, I'm already a slime, but still. Which he just nods. He goes, Yes, about Shoutier. He goes, Yeah, um, seriously, it's alright if you're gonna say no. I mean, honest and truth, I'm fine with that. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of be kind of silly. He goes, like, No, I approve of it. It's a punishment. He goes, like, Uh, uh, wait, seriously? You're using this as a punishment? He goes, Yes. And also, she can basically learn a few things from you. Basically, this... If gods are basically bringing things to other worlds, does that mean you'll be also able to travel into these different worlds? He's like, uh, oh, you sneaky... Oh, you sneaky skeleton. <laughs> she just laughs. He goes like, uh, I had to basically think of that. It was a possibility that I came up with just yesterday. He's like, well... Technically, I'm Amy and go to one. He was like, wait, really? He was, yeah, but it has a different RPG setting. He goes, wait, RPG setting? You mean leveling system? He was like, yeah, each level basically you have is basically only determined by on how well basically the gods approve of or if you basically push through a challenging situation. He goes, wait, so you mean you could be level one for all your life until? He goes, yep. And each skill basically... You know, strength, endurance, dexterity, magic, and agility all go by a ranking like E to B to F. He goes, huh. Well, then, shout to her. Which she just says, yes, Lord Ainz. So she basically goes over, and I'm like, well, you're kind of lucky I became a devil, so this should be easy. She goes, huh? The system I have. Narpole knows it, but she does not. He was like, Narbo, what do you... And she just, like, go, you know, comes forward. He was like, I've basically chosen, basically, to become part of your team. I thought about it, and it does seem to help out Nazareth more, basically, I can learn from more, well, from you. He goes, fine. Learning from me is good and all. Basically, getting more experience while you're around me. And plus... I mean, you'll be basically able to see things that, basically, Ions hasn't seen yet. And basically, you'll be able to write down information. But only this, I will warn you. Anything, basically, at my base, 
you're not allowed to take. And you're not allowed to basically take anything that's important in the worlds that we are going to. If we ever go to any. Which she does nod. Which basically, Shao Tear goes like, So, I know a ritual how to basically make me become a part of your familiar. And like, ah, uh, I do too. She goes, huh? How? He goes, well, I kind of needed to look this up, but it's basically, I had to basically use my demonic aura from this, from the system I got to basically make you one. But, let's see if basically they're exactly the same thing first. Or something. Because, depending on which one would be actually way more better. Mine would just basically like give you orders and stuff and tell you what to do. And you basically can help out. Or the one that you have has some significance to it. She goes, well, there is mine that does help, you know, give a little bit more significance. Huh. Eh. Either one will work. So basically we just try, we just use both in the end. So basically Shoutier actually does get, a, well, actually will feel a little bit different, a little more stronger. And the fact is she'd be kind of wondering, you know, why does she feel like something's changed? And like, huh? What's wrong? She goes, Wait, um, can I see something real quick? I'm like, uh, sure. But if you're just going to bite me for blood, that is, that technically is part of the agreement where I do feed you sometimes. She does not, and she does, basically, she tries to go into her look she usually would, you know, when she's about to feed, but she doesn't. She goes, huh? What's wrong? He, what, what's wrong with me? He goes like, oh. 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 Um. Well, uh, how should I say this? Are you, side effect, I guess, where you change species of vampire? She goes, huh? You just, just bite down, you know, just use your fangs to bite down. She goes, um, okay. So she does, and, you know, she does pierce my skin and all, but, you know, she stops immediately. She goes, wait, that means I, I mean, it's normal, but I don't, she goes, yeah, you still keep your whole tire probably when you basically kill someone, and then basically the blood will go into a ball and spin around. It's just that you're vampiric way is different how you basically you can feed off of somebody I mean huh hmm we'll test out something out later so basically though I basically look at Narble I'm like so Bishop she goes huh chess piece she goes wait is this the system you're like yeah I basically have basically chess pieces Two knights, two rooks, two bishops, one queen, and I'm I'm the king though, and basically pawns, eight of them. I only have one knight so far, and you'll be the bishop. She goes, huh, all right. So basically, I you know, just do with the ritual for it, and, and you know she appears a lot more powerful and different than you know double wings appear. She was like, interesting. I do feel a little more different. He goes. Nice. So, I would have the wings do a, you know disappear. And I was like, well, then, Ains, is there anything else you need to know? She, he goes, yes. Would you like to have, basically, someone to help you? To learn some magical spells if you do not know any? Or, well, to have someone to basically uh, keep an eye on some situation because of I have my two subordinates there with you. Well, I'm like, well, they are your friend's children, so it only makes sense to have basically someone to be there by their side to make sure I don't get them into any situations they can't handle. Which, he does not. And he goes, I only trust one person for them at the moment to do this. And I'm like, where's the eyebrow? I'm like, really? Is it Demirge? Sorry, but uh, if I know him, he wants me dead. <laughs> Which he goes, No. Well, that would be amusing. He goes, yeah, especially how he basically makes your scrolls. Ugh. Which he goes, huh? What do you mean? I thought, doesn't take it from the chimeras that badly. He goes, just go to Demirge's place where he basically makes them. You'll find out. And also, for, remember your humanity. I mean, I know you're basically part of your character, but still. Keep your humanity in check. He just looked at me, basically, he's like, curious, but kind of basically worried a bit, so he just nods. So, he goes, I only trust one person that I basically could go with you, Shaltier. 
and Narbo will be watched by Abedo. As Abedo just looks over at basically Ainz, she goes, But Lord Ainz, I, as I like, wow, that's actually a splendid idea. I mean, she doesn't really, I mean, she really won't get out much. She won't basically be able to go anywhere else besides wait for you. And plus, I mean, she gets to meet new creatures, people, whatever, in new places. Excellent idea, Ainz. When she goes, now, I only have one last question. It goes, yes. As basically, I'm kind of just smiling. I goes, like, this parage, or this team, as you will call it. So he goes, oh, yeah, it's parage. Devil basically is do this in this one world. A anime. He goes, ah, I see. What does it do? He goes, well, it resurrects any humans that are dead or non humans. Like, it's basically supposed to be like for the humans to be revived because the devil fallen angels and angel species dwindled. And that's all I'm going to say. He goes like, so they use humans basically to fill off their ranks. He goes, yep. But with me, I guess basically it's tweet to basically where I can use it on anyone. He goes, so who do you have in mind? Anyway, one was going to be Shaltir, but she became my familiar. Two was going to be Narbo because one, she would be a good bishop and she had, her magic is really powerful. Basically. And three, well, Sevis would have been one, but I decided not to. One of he'd be like acquaintance, and f basically four is a man you ain't met. But the fifth one is well, kind of a little bit more of a dangerous situation for me. As he looks in at me with curious, he goes, "Hmm, what do you mean, sort of a danger?" Like, well, her devotion to Nazareth is, well. <laughs> Unquestionable. By the way, can you check to see if basically Narble and Shaltier are proceed as traitors? Which he does, and there's no change. I'm like, there is none. Strange. I mean, well, I mean, maybe it's not as long as you know they're not traitors. But that is good. Which basically, I was thinking about, he just eyes, I mean, not eyes, but he looks at me, he was like, it was going to be Albedo. He was, yes. I mean, in truth, it was getting, you know, she was never going to basically say yes to it. But, I mean, this is a good opportunity. You cannot blame me for if I try. Which he just looks at me and goes like, would she basically, he goes, well, let me say this. I will not put anyone from Nazareth, basically, to say, I cannot basically return to you, Lord Ains. No, I will basically let them go. They are basically allowed to return whenever they want. I am basically a fair person. I'm not going to say, oh, you, you cannot leave my side. That would be too cruel for them to take away from their only home and friends. I cannot do that. So basically, always look at me and just nod. He goes, well, I already told them both to basically follow your orders and basically serve under you like you would serve me. Basically, stay by your side. Which I just look and be like, wait, are you? Who's yes. Shoutier will be missed, but as you said, if she's only needed, you know, for certain events or certain situations, I will call on her. So you will not stop her. I just not know. Then the same will be for Narbro and basically Albedo. But Albedo will return every so often if she becomes a member of your parage, the devil system. Like, well, I mean, Shiro Tenor Ray is a demon. I mean, you know, succubus. So, he just nods. He's like, but, as all of a sudden the Queen Peace appears, hold up. Alright, so basically, as I was saying, I'm just holding the Queen Peace like, you want to see what type of magic she'll get? Which, basically, he's just looking at me, you're like, the change will not be different. Probably just another set of wings, and each wing depends on how strong you are as a devil. In their system. He just looks at me. You're like. I see. So. You always start off with two sets. I'm like. Yep. Anyways. They're about better. You want to see what will happen. She just looks at me. She just sighs. Just get it all over with. We just get it on with already. As I just. Now be like. Yes ma'am. And basically. You know. Do a little. Basically ritual again. And basically a queen piece. I'm like. There we go. <laughs> Well, there will be no raiding game, so I will not ever need them to battle for me in that. It's a raiding game. Yeah, it went basically to 
basically devils fight with their parage against each other. It's not to the death. It's only basically until basically they are weak and they'll disappear. And basically sent to an ER room. He goes, I see. I've learned a lot from you. Thank you. He goes, yeah, but by the way, I am going to show them some stuff of the world we're going to go to. All right? He goes, huh? And a little bit about you. Which he just looks at me. He's like, uh, you, you can't. I'm like, I just kind of just chuckle like, gotcha. But she's just looking at me like, wait, how could you? Like, exactly, how could I? Basically, he doesn't know. So, in a sense, basically, he's just like, <clears throat> well then, Alberto, please, look after them. And report to me if anything happens to them that is, well, questionable. Which, she will nod. Like, yes, Lord Ainz. And I'm like, don't worry, I won't do nothing bad. It's not like, basically, I'm going to basically cause a problem for basically everyone. Which, I just look at me, I'm like, huh? Uh, did I say something wrong? He's like, I have a feeling you are more, mostly chaotic. And trouble follows you everywhere you go. I'm like, uh, not true. Maybe. I don't know. But she just sighs and be like, I see why you basically assigned me to this, Lord Ines. Hold up. Okay, so basically he goes like, Thank you, Alberto. You are basically the one I can trust the most on this. She basically basically nods again. So, basically, I basically just sighed like, If only I had Chaos Emerald. <sighs> Maybe I could, I could, if I could use Time Stop, then why not Chaos Control? And Chaos Blast, if I can use them. So basically, I'm like, alright, everyone, I'm going to teleport us there. Which, basically, they just look at me, and they're like, alright, I just basically have one, basically, one of each person touch my right and left shoulder. Alright, basically, they nod. And, like, just look at eyes. I, I just prompt, no, I just say to him, I do not know how long we're going to basically go, so, if you have anything you need to basically for them to take... Or such, please, you know, call Abedo. We obviously will be here for a couple, of, probably hours. Which he does nod, and I say chaos control, and we teleport away. Which I just think, hmm. I'll go through some inventory for them to take. So yeah, so basically we arrive at my base when they just see it. They're like, Charlotte's like, whoa, you. This is where you live? They're like, yeah, in, in a rantel. I need a house. Where she goes, like, you built this? I'm like, yeah, with a little bit of help. Basically, I just take it off the cloak and put it on the basically a, a basic coat hanger rack, which I have better seen. And she goes, wow. Basically, what I, basically, I upgraded to be more like, you know, marble, basically, but there's like a little bit like technology, like going through it. It's been three days. I mean, I would have Shadow Clones work on this stuff like crazy. So basically, there's the laboratory for our venting and for like for basically magic. Well, basically, research of magic spells I could use and such, or I can basically have, or I do have, to see what they can do properly. Along with basically a train area and basically a, a room for basically portals. For basically, if there's like. You know, for me, basically, just to go, I at least can basically have a portal there, and then with a sign of where it is, you know, where it goes to and stuff. So it's like or gonna be like an organized training area for ninjas. Um, basically, the training ground is basically in the middle. You know, basically, like everything's basically just fixed. Like another storage area for like more like random supp supplies or just extra space. Um, basically, a technology building room. A research lab, basically, and all that. So I'm like, all right. So here's the thing. We're uh, we're gonna watch something. And basically, before beforehand, I get a message. I mean, I get Luna says, Lu well, not Luna. I mean, like zero. <laughs> yeah, zero. I just got a message from basically. Well, well, I, yeah. No, hold up. My mind's blank. I said I got a message from Freya. They're ready. I mean, you're basically approved. And she already knows, basically, because I've been keeping in contact with her, who, who you're bringing. Like, alright. Wait. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They don't realize if they're human. Some people may try to kill them, think they're monsters. Just, don't worry. 
I kind of already thought of that ahead of time. I'm like, uh, you basically did something when I was sleeping, didn't you, besides Zongetsu? She goes, uh-huh. I may or may not have basically talked to a few gods, and they said agreed to this. Again, they agreed. I figured just for a bell, just so you, if you want to basically walk around with her uh, public, whenever you basically made her your queen piece, for her to basically wear a choker that basically would use a combination between chakra, magic, and technology, basically, you know, to make an illusion. I'm like, huh. So, you can appear whenever just to give it to me? She goes, I will. So, go do your, basically, opening the portal, and then it'll basically be right in front of basically where... Um, hold up, I need to look up the name. Alright, so it's basically O R A. R I O so I'm gonna have I'm just gonna say or R Aura Orio something Aurea something like that. But at least I give this spell and basically the city of that. I'm like, alright, I just need basically to bring up the speed. As she goes, right, I'll let her know. Basically, yeah, so uh what happens is very simple. I basically quickly disappear and blur a you know blue as I basically you know basically open up the portal and put down Demanchi of a sign over it. You know, open up the portal as in it kinda of like appears where the ground is actually making like a little basically stone a tower on each other to make a circle where the portal is just there as I put a sign basically like Demanchi. I'm like, cool. I run back, I'm like, okay, so here's the thing. We're basically going to go to a world that's basically based off of an anime, but it basically became real because of the multiverse theory. Which, they look at me, all three of them look at me like, huh? Like, I'll explain that all later. But here's the thing. You're going to all watch season one of this world, and we're going to watch the rest of it sometime after season one, where we're basically in the story. Which, basically, I was like, why are we going there? Like... A god named Freya basically wanted me to come there just so I could probably help out Bell Chrono, the main character of this, basically, anime. Basically, he's a weak human at first that became strong. She basically shouts to her, like, Why is she not, you know, helping him directly because he's not part of her familia? A familia, Norbo will say. Like, a familia is a family of where a god is, or a god, looks after humans they basically give a blessing to. Where you're basically going to have to join a familia. And I would suggest we join the Hestia one, because they only have one member at the moment. And two, honest and truth, she's the one that would actually help us out the most. She actually would care about her familia a lot. Which, basically, they're like, you know, just look at me, and then Alba was like, well, are you not going to show us this anime? Like, right. So... Gates of Babylon. I go into the gate. Basically, the TV is already set up. As in, I bring out a DVD player and the anime. But then I also kind of like... Also, I'm about to tell you some stuff about Ainz, but that'll be for later. Which they all look at me curiously. So, I basically, sh basically show them the Manchi Season 1. <laughs> it's going to be... You know, it's going to be a couple of hours. Hold up. Alright everyone, sorry about that. My dad just came in and opened up the door and told me they were going out. So, here's the... Um, so, as I left off, basically, I basically shown them season one of Damanchi. So, we will basically go to where the gods are. As, basically, oh yeah, well, Luna would appear right in front of them and just watch it too. Basically, they kind of just looked at her and be like, wait, this is the goddess? I'm like, yes, I know. Shocking. Which basically did would just not, but yeah, we go to the gods' room. It's basically each god's like, okay, so uh, they will make a list of what we're gonna do, basically to bring to this world slowly but surely. I said one evil god was like, yeah, first off, it's monster hunter. We're definitely bringing a monster, a Raffalos, to test it out to see if they can actually handle it. He goes, all right, all right. Anything else we'll bring, like you know, from that world slowly? Yeah, all the way up to Fatalis. Which they just look at this evil god be like. Wait, well, I feel like, yeah, I mean, if you really don't think about it, Fatalis is basically one of those stronger dragons. So why not? I mean, we could test to see if he can actually handle it. And we might as well basically let him go there next to basically 
see if he can bring in a few people to become his hunters. Or basically have like a hunter association start there. Which they're like, okay, are you sure you're evil god? They're like, I am evil, yes. But help by basically innovating and having new things happen in the world, I'm not against. Massive destruction, yes, I am okay with. Which they which were just one guy be like, you're like one of those people who loves to basically have the times change just for new and inventive things happen. As he just nods. Basically like Okay, so, uh, basically, we're bringing some villains from different animes or movies or whatever into it. Basically, he goes, like, why? Like, one, I, well, certainly one god wants to test him basically to see if he can actually handle being Spider-Man. So, I guess one of Spider-Man's villains. He's like, okay, so what do you recommend? Vulture. We just bring into while he's in Damanji. Which they just look at him and be like, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it actually would be the best thing. I mean, it'd be kind of an easy one to take down, but at the same time, it'd be difficult because he doesn't know how to face him. So they do not, and they kind of just go through it. While Sun Jun Wu is basically looking at basically the, well, basically my inventory, he just looks at the key, he goes, huh, let's just change this up a bit. So he basically kind of raised the ranking of the key to be an A to S rank key. He goes, he'll never know. So, yeah, so they kind of brainstorming, and, uh, one of the thing I did that was came in was, um, basically Final Fantasy idea, but that's gonna be for later, so, basically, we, after basically the got, you know, Albedo, Shaltir, and Narbrol basically watched the anime, I mean, I do think they'll be like, huh, so humans made this, and like, yes, I Basically, Shadow Tear like, I never knew basically humans basically have a, just an interesting story. Or make them at least. Which basically, Narble, which is like, agreed. I thought they were just insects, but they are good for something. And I honestly can't believe I'm actually going to say this about a human, but how does he act like a rabbit at times? Basically, I just shrugged it like, any season, well, I mean, basically in season one, you guys saw about how they basically say little bells, bunny. Which, they just, you know, chuckle at that, which Albedo basically was like, huh. I do like the concept of a, we of a weakling becoming strong, but his desire to basically catch up to, uh, basically, to this Eins. Eins? Wallenstein? Wallenstein, whatever. Yeah. Eins, Wallenstein, something like that. I don't really care for her. I just, I just call her mostly Sword Princess. She's like, yes, her. Doesn't it give a distraction? Because, like, no, his, uh, his, basically, ability, life is free, basically, as long as he has those strong mo motions towards her, and, basically, his desire to catch up to her, the faster he'll grow and progress to, basically, catch up. Which, she goes, like, I see. Hmm. Does the story gave him better? He's like, I yeah, in my opinion, it does. So, she goes, basically, I just look at her, and then Narble. And I'm like, wait a minute, you do actually like the anime? She basically they just nod and I'm like, so you're not against it. You know, going there. She goes, No. I'm like, cool. And I think to myself, okay, did I just really make them just watch anime and they basically just enjoyed it? Basically though, I'm just not shaking my head I'm like, okay, don't think of it. And basically I do say, in a sense, humans are still humans. I'm not trying to say anything about my own species, but we are technically, we can be cruel and mean. And be true monsters at times. Which basically, Albedo and Narbo and Shaltir would be like, I don't really think that's possible, but, well, technically, humans are, basically, they both are saying, I mean, all three of them are saying at the exact same time. But, anyways, as basically all of a sudden, I would say this, just basically, child, I mean, just Luna basically gives basically a bow the choker by putting it on her. She's like, there we go, and activate. She presses this little, well, none, well, she basically pushes the emblem. Uh, they said I was hanging off of it, as then all of a sudden it just starts glowing and such, and Abedo's features change. Well, stays the same, but her horns and basically wings disappear. 
as before we even go, as then basically Alberto basically gets a message and she goes, right away with Lord Ainz. So basically they, you know, she basically, I'll be right back, you know, and leaves. She basically comes back with basically, hold up. Alright, so basically she comes back with some normal clothing, but, I mean, and basically potions and such, basically to keep in the inventory space that they're going to have. And such, and I'm like, huh, some different clothing for you guys to blend in. Basically, she just nods. She's like, Lord Ein said it would be a good idea to have these, and basically these. Basically, she actually holds like a few HP potions. I'm like, well, I mean, this is another fantasy world, so they do have their own HP potions. And I love how basically the worlds are basically going to be different. So, I mean, as you already saw, she nods, and she goes, I understand that, but still, we have to at least have some preparations. Don't you agree? I'm like, just not. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I truly just run into the world without any preparations, because honest and truth, I'm just going to get my own stuff while I'm there. Basically, just Luna would just chuckle. So, yeah. So, basically, Shaltir and Albedo would basically change, because Narbro probably would have already had her Nave clothes. So, yeah. So basically, after that, basically, while we're, you know, basically, while basically I'm waiting for them to get ready, basically, Luna's just there. Like, you know, you don't have to stay here if you don't feel comfortable around them. She goes, I'm fine. So, do you, what do you think is happening in this world right now? Probably the Sorcerer Kingdom's basically talking about me. How I basically took down Shaltir Bloodfall. Basically, in my own little way, by freeing her of the mind control, they probably think I'm a fr threat to them. And basically want to try to kill me because I took on a transformation form. Or they want to find out what I am just so they can prevent anything else from happening. Even enhancing the humans to basically be stronger than now. But she just nods. She goes, so, are you surprised basically how battles here? I'm like, heck yeah. Honestly, huh, truth, it makes sense she would be here just to keep an eye and be kind of like their safety, even, you know, from me, just in case. She is the tank of the group. So, in honest and truth, uh, he's gonna be, he's probably gonna bring out Pandora's after, which I do have to visit, and try to get a friendly, well, a friendly conversation started between us, and ask I to basically like, ever take him out. He'll probably take him basically out to the world to be pretending to be Nabe. Which, which, basically, he would not. He was like, also, wait, I never got in touch with Ainz. Basically, when I just say that, um, basically, I would hear about, like, what do you need from him? Basically, I'm like, ah, um, can you basically, uh, tell me how you do that message call magic to him? Which, she's like, hmm, I don't know if I can, but I can basically tell him, basically, well, well, get in touch with him just so you can ask. I'm like, yeah, ask him about basically the sort of darkness, you know, group, adventurers. I don't know basically if he still keeps in contact with them. And if he doesn't, then he should really start off adventuring with them again. I mean, he did have some plans with them for the future. Which she does not. She does get in touch, basically. She does say, you know, and tell him what I said. He goes, he actually thinks that's an excellent idea. He goes, good. Also, basically, if he can, if he can hear me or not, I'm just saying... Don't think of them like your old partners of the Supreme Beings. This is a new world. Enjoy it. Have new friends. And remember, keep your humanity in check. Which she doesn't understand, but, you know. Which she goes, alright. He says, thank you for the vote of confidence and suggestion, and he will try. Right, which I'm like, good. So basically, just Luna just looking at me, just smiling. She goes, oh, aren't you, um, well... Actually, I'm going to get going, but, you know, if you get new skills, all the gods are watching. I'm like, great, let me know if anything happens, all right? She just nods and she, did, you know, disappears. As in, Albedo's like, so, that's the goddess. Not much, I thought. And you're like, well, all gods have different ways of appearance, Albedo. Legit, a smallest creature can be a god. Like, they can shapeshift. Which she actually would be kind of surprised, but curious. Basically, I'm like, well, since we're waiting for basically a shout tier, Narbro's probably 
t- well, helping her put on some different clothing than what she's used to, I probably should also tell her or see if she can actually shape shift her form. Which basically, I bet it'll be like, wait, what? Oh, and then all of a sudden I kind of shape shift my looks. I'm like, she basically, how should I say, she became my familiar. So, in a sense, I think, you know, she basically felt different. She basically, you know, doesn't need to drink no blood as you saw. As she would transform into like this weird creature that I like to call a combination between two different things from, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, that's besides the point. So maybe something else. She could have the shape-shifting ability from my other vampiric race. She's like, wait, what? I always say I do the same. But the thing is, I do notice, as I say, I open up my skill, I'm like, I do have something called Shadow Home Festival or something, or basically Household. Which her eyes wanted, was like, how do you have that? And you're like, yes, her way, basically my way, basically combined to a different way, but there's a whole entire new system of basically how familiars basically coincided. And I guess becoming a familiar, it's hard to explain. A lot of this stuff is new to me. She's like, that's the most complicated way you can ever explain something. And it makes no sense. Okay. And I'm like, True. I like to exaggerate on some stuff. So, basically, though, I'm like, anyways. I basically think, well, I am going to plan something in the future. Plan to basically get at least two to three people on my side from a world. A world, basically, where someone dies that should not have not died, in my opinion. So, I'm going to need, basically, the Ghost Rider. Basically, when I go into that section, basically, of my skill, basically, it's the, I literally hear, just sees it. Ghost Rider. I do look at my points, and, uh, yeah. Um, I basically just realized, holy cow. I have a lot of points in that last chat. <laughs> well, um, this is gonna be awkward. Because I do have enough, but still. I'm gonna have, like, like, a billion extra. So, I do look at the skill, though, and it literally says, Ghost Rider, a spirit of vengeance that will be randomly chosen for you. This was an idea from my friend of who? Basically, it says, from any world. From anime, game, manga, movie or TV show, basically. As I'm like, please, please, just Zarathos. As I you know, activate it, and then all of a sudden, boom, bust, you know, combusted, and basically skeleton, which Alberto did back away from. And she's just, what the? Basically, I'm like, looking at myself, I'm like, huh. So, this is what it feels like to be the spirit of vengeance, or about well, the ghost rider. May I'm like it. I guess it didn't hurt that much because my regeneration. Huh. Well, first time for everything, and then all of a sudden I basically slowly turn back to normal. Meanwhile, in my head, as someone appears, hold up. Okay, never mind. If someone appears, basically, which Karama just sees, he's like, huh? Well, not he, but, you know, Karama sees, as Karama's like, huh? As basically, a, a basically, person with horns, wearing basically a, well, you say, lightish blue slash black outfit, with blue hair, you know, basically is around and she has a mark on her chest that Karama can clearly see. Which, basically, Karama is like, okay, who are you? But she's basically looking around and such, and she's like, huh. Well, this is unusual. Is there, I mean, not there, but Mephisto basically show, showed me basically my path my past home, and then I was enraged and became in spirit of vengeance. I have no control over myself. So how am I here? Basically, she looks and sees the big giant, you know, fluff ball. You know, basically, it's Karama. As well, she, basically, she was like, who, who are you? Basically, Karama's like, I am Karama, the nine-tailed fox. And you? She Basically, she reveals herself to be, 
The name's Esdeath, and that's all you need to know, beast. So, tell me, did Mephisto basically give a contract to some human if he's I was chosen? I mean, I was the most powerful torturer he had, but too powerful that he feared. Which, Karam does no, he was like, eh, just because of my new partner's basically weird ability from a goddess. Which, as if it's like, partner? See, basically all of a sudden memories are being shown and such. From basically my time as when I was in my world to now. And she's like, huh. I see. So, I was chosen at random. But why do I feel like this, it wasn't chosen at random? It was specifically just to torment him. Which he was, maybe it was Mephisto. Gods and goddesses are watching him. <gasps> Meanwhile, with basically, you know... The gods and you know, basically, the gods are basically watching as one god, one god that literally just did not care. He's like, Yes, suffer, deal with this. I'm gonna make everything that you did not want to happen to happen. Basically, evil moment. Which I want to say, the most funniest thing is, Uno was just basically taking a sip out of the water. And from a glass, basically, she basically sees who the spirit of vengeance was. And slowly and surely, though, when she's looking, they see basically just and they go like, well, he's going to be interesting. Maybe I'll be excited when I get to talk to him. I get to see if he's like basically how he was. Which, she has a little grin on her face, which Karama just like looking at her. But then all of a sudden, Ezlip gets serious and they have like a little, little glaring match between them. And then all of a sudden, every god and goddess hears suddenly the, a glass crack as Luna is just like, Okay, who was the one who chose her to become his spirit of vengeance? As not everyone's being quiet. As they're all thinking, note to self, never pissed her off. So yeah. So in a sense, when Shoutir came back in the meantime, when all that was happening, you know, because they heard basically the explosion, such, I basically would tell Shoutir maybe she can change her form now because of, well, I do tell her about Avalakar's abilities and such, so maybe she has a few more than what I have from her household. So she would not, and... She does change her form, basically, into basically the form of what she'll like if she aged up a bit. And in a sense, she basically gets the one thing she was happy with, she actually wanted. That, you know, basically, she's actually, I actually, ha you basically have a chest now. But then she looks out of bed, and she's like, uh, uh, but there's, mm. basically, just out of bed, just grin at her, but like, yep. Yeah. This is funny, as I just kind of just sigh, be like, just pat her head, be like, listen, doesn't matter, as long as it matters your personality, be grateful for that, you know, be grateful and be happy for that. Besides, you basically got the one thing you wanted. So, unintentionally, I do think she would kind of just like, flabbergasted by just me being kind, in a sense. And you kind of just look away, be like, yeah, you're right. So, unknowingly, I do think it would kind of just be like one of those moments where it would be like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't notice, but you know, she's blushing, but it's like, because of embarrassment, <laughs> she got childish. So yeah, so after that, I, uh, you know, I go, all right, let's go to Demanche. As they say, we just go into the portal. And so, a few minutes pass. And we get there. And we arrive in or Oria. As basically I'm like, huh, we're right in front of it. There's no guards, nothing. As then we see basically Freya. We all know what she looks like. If you don't know, look up basically Freya from the Manchi or is it one of the girls in the dungeon. As then I basically just sigh and I'm like, well, it's good that I kept my, wait, Oh man, my my basically cloak. I forgot it. As then all of a sudden it just pops on my head. I'm like, Oof. why did it feel like it was thrown at me? As long as basically just mad. <laughs> Which everyone's just like looking at her. I just like like just like chaos. Like, oh, it's the little goddess mad that now he uh, that may be another rival for you. But she just says, shut it. 
So, in a sense, they put on their clothing, basically, for it. It was like, welcome to a new world. I'm like, yeah, let's just get this meeting over with. I got stuff I gotta do here in this world. She goes, hmm, I wanna get straight to the point. I'm like, yeah, don't even try none of your little tricks and using your charm ability, Freya. She goes, I mean, she would just kind of chuck me like, you already know so much about me, I know nothing of you. How interesting. You're like, well, it doesn't matter. Basically, she looks behind me and goes, like, so are these your companions? I'm like, yeah, one of them is a babysitter to make sure I don't do nothing bad to those two. As a point to shout here and, you know, Nabe. In which she was like, ah. So, we do walk through the town, which everyone's thinking, hey, are they joined the basically Freya Familia? Which, basically, I'm like, I don't think so. It doesn't look like that type of meaning, but still. So, yeah, so we basically go into a little reclusive restaurant in a face in the back. She's like, and she does have one of her guards, basically her main, I forgot his name, but, um, her main, basically, person that would basically go train the Minotaur. She basically sits down and you're like, so, I want you to help out Belle. And, like, figures as much. You are obsessed with him at the moment. She goes, <laughs> obsessive is just a strong word. I say, highly interested in. And, like, just roll my eyes be like, yeah, yeah. Basically, while she's looking at me, she basically can see, basically, the potential grows every, like, it looks like it's grown every minute while we're talking. And she's thinking, so, he has a large amount of potential like Belle, but his is so different. I wonder, would it rub off on Belle? I mean, she kind of thinks that with a little bit of a smile mentally. And I'm like, so... You want me to join the Hestia Familia to actually help out Bell and train him a bit. To actually give him some actually pointers and stuff before. While well, he faces a creature you already have it trained by him. The only reason why he's not training it is because right now it's asleep. Which, basically that would kind of catch her off guard a bit. But then, Smack was like, well you sure are informed of me and my little plans. I wonder... Should I basically look into you more than Belle? As I'm literally all of a sudden, an aura basically comes around me. Basically, I'm like, even try, you know, trying to get with me or get near me. I'll become a god killer. Understand that, Freya? Which, basically, her uh, bodyguard, her basically top, you know, basically, um, adventurer would, about to take out a sword, she just starts chuckling. Like, Third and a goddess. You are sure one basically brave mortal. Basically, I'm like, I haven't even become a god yet. But trust me, I have at least some powers that can kill gods. Where well, she goes, I bet you do. Well, yes, that is all. And I want to give you this. As basically, she basically brings out something and basically puts on the table. And basically, she gives it to me. I'm like, what the... What is this? She was some weird... I don't know what it was. But it appeared here in this world saying it was meant to give you this since it knew you were coming here. It said it is the Chaos Band. Basically, I'm like, what? Basically, I just grab it and basically put it... You know, I just look at it. And all of a sudden, it just immediately shines and basically goes around basically my arm. I'm like, what the... She basically says, it said only you would know what it means. I said, I'm thinking the chaos band. Wait, no. Chaos energy. At least I kind of feel a large amount of basically energy from from the band going into me. As I do realize the chaos emeralds. So. Basically, if you guys are not, don't understand it. The chaos emeralds basically not made into a band. Basically, their power is infused into it. So basically, it's like all chaos emeralds are there. I say I get the skill supersonic. I'm like, oh, this just got easy. Basically, I'm like, wait, Sunjin Wu skills. I'll look at them later, but still. So she goes, so, I want you to go to the Hestia Familia right now, please. And uh, please help out Bell. He's going to need it. I'm like, right. She goes, oh, by the way, since you entered this world, you do have to follow our world's rules. That means all your levels are level one. Which, I mean, kind of shock, shout, tear, and, you know, normal, and basically, I bet I'm like, huh, 
So, even though we still have our natural levels, so to speak, for them, but they have this world, basically, when they basically get the, the blessing of God, it'll be level one. But be high stats. She just nods. I'm like, nice. I mean, at least that's easy to understand. She goes, well, have a nice day. And, uh, zero. I just look at her. She goes like, please be careful. I don't want to see someone that basically has interest in you die here. Even though you probably can't die. Just still. Just a little bit of a warning. As I say, she gets up and walks away. As I say, after basically she leaves, basically, Abel's like, What's, I know we we only saw so much from her from the, you know, but still, is she always like that? I'm like, yeah, but, uh, why did I feel like I just became on her list of guys she wants to be with? Which, basically, Charlotte here was just kind of shocked. It was going to be like, it's your charming personality. I'm like, personality? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I just threatened her, basically. That ain't personality, that's just pure on, don't even give a crap attitude towards her. Which, basically, she does not. So we get, get up, and uh, we ask around town, and we do find the Hestia Familia. Basically, I knock on the church door, and I'm like, is anybody home? Hello? And then, basically, we hear a commotion, like, we hear someone going, we're almost, I'm going to be there soon. Hold up. Basically, you know, hold on. Basically, she, we wait for a few minutes, and then Hestia comes up. She goes, you see, sorry about that. It was a little bit of cleaning around. Um, how might I help you? I'm like, are you he- basically Hestia? Goddess Hestia? She just nods. Basically, shouts here just looking at her. She's like, even her? Well, I mean, he did say not to basically be sad. Be happy with what I got. So she just puts on, you know, very free, but she kind of in the corner of her head, basically just sulking. Uh, so basically... So, I would say when Hestia was like, um, yes, what is it? You're like, so, we four want to join the Hestia Familia. Which Hestia was like, huh? Like, yeah, we want to join. Right? They say that everyone just nods. They're like, you want to join? I'm like, uh huh. She basically doesn't look at us. She's like, that's great! C- come, come! Basically. So, yeah, we basically see it. Abel basically kind of go over to me and just whispers, like, kind of a dump, isn't it? I'm like, it's the only thing she can get. I mean, she was kind of one of the nearest last ones to basically come down here to Earth. She really had nothing at first. Can't really blame her. They can't use their godly powers. Maybe she goes, oh, she's like a mortal. I'm like, yeah. She goes, I see. So basically we go down to basically the base, and she goes, well, I'm sorry much, but, uh, I mean, I'm planning to try to save enough money with my one other, basically, child. Basically, um, trying to basically find a place. Like, it's no problem, Hestia. I, uh, heard about a lot, so it's okay. She just really, as I say, shout here, just nod. You see, it, it's a lovely home. And they basically normally like, yeah, so you are basically trying to do whatever you can. Right? She does nod, and basically, I'll be able to, like, well, I did think it was a dump, but it does have this cozy feeling to it. And our friend here, basically, she points to me, could help you out on basically rearranging and basically adding some things to it. She goes, wait, what? I don't think that's possible. It was like, I have a unique skill set. <laughs> so basically, meanwhile, Karama and basically, as now, she basically goes, so he went to a new world in that Freya woman. I don't like her. But that Luna, I especially don't like. Basically, Kurama just, like, trust Chuck. And like, what? Basically, you're going to have a competition with a goddess? Are you literally just declaring him, basically, as your new love interest? She goes, yes. Which, basically, Kurama just looks at her and be like, you do realize that's going to be kind of impossible for you. She goes, I just have to wait till he basically gets stronger to where I can form right in front of him and make my own body. And then... Basically, I can introduce myself. Just basically, Karama's like thinking, okay, whoever did this is one basically crazy person. As basically that evil god just actually, another evil god just grinning and be like, ah, this sweet suffering. I cannot wait to see that happen. So yeah, so basically, 
Shaltir went and got her basically blessing on long, basically where she was actually kind of strong because of her agility and endurance. Basically was like 3,000. So like SS class basically. Almost SS class basically. And everything else is like pretty just like S or double S. Shaltir based out of Shaltir. So basically normal Gamma which is basically just goes as normal. Basically it's like high like basically to S to basically two like you know SS to basically SSS like for like magic that would probably be SS for basically strength SSS agility SSS basically ranking so she'd be kind of just shot basically Albedo just endurance that's like the highest because she's a tank so that's like trip but it's like four times S everything else is like between three and two and then she goes, <laughs> um, you? And I'm like, sure. So basically, they, uh, they very knew basically you had to be on the back. So I, because I went, I went like, just like, was looking away and such. I was not even going to look. I just basically turned around and looked at the wall. Be like, this is a nice wall. But then I did kind of think of basically what I can do. So like, create new rooms and such. So basically, you know. I just basically take off the cloak outfit I have on, basically top, and just like go on my back as basically Hestia's basically, you know, blessing. As then, when she sees my freaking stats, I'm the normal out of, I'm the basically normal, or basically out of the group, because mine are technically like weak, sort of. Basically, this is what I basically thought my stats would be, since I'm really, because I was someone from the level... 30, basically, with what the strengths I have, so, strength, for me, in Demonchi level, you know, basically, level 1, it's an S-class, to almost, tri like, double S, basically, 1,749, endurance, 2,000, 2,149, dexterity, 2,529, agility, 2,991, and magic, 1,629, she was like, wow, these are a lot, as in, all of a sudden, I get automatically get the notification of three new skills from solo leveling. And that, since I basically have Damanchi, you know, basically mark on me now, all of a sudden, she basically sees two things that Belle already has. Which she's just shocked by. She basically thinks to herself, no, this last freeze, basically, and Firebolt, this is from Belle. Wait, could he be... Because she was very, very been told by it. So basically, you know, she basically puts it down. And, uh, you know, basically that magical orb. And then basically sh puts a paper on my back. And basically do that circle thing where the, it just all appears with the stats. Give me a minute. Okay, so basically I get from Sun Jin Wu. Shadow Rush. Basically, it says I can basically rush at my opponents. It's like critical, basically, you know, like critical chain or such. Basically where I... Basically, would Sanji would attack his enemies or basically make multiple slashes. For me, it's just like go and attack my enemies all at once, no matter if it's in a group or solo. And I may leave a massive amount of attack damage of slashes that, you know, can do piercing. Basically, Shadow Arrow could basically just be I can shoot an arrow and basically it would, you know, do a lot of damage, especially if it's during the, you know, at night. Or basically, I can use it and make it to make a pathway between one area to another, so I have a rope all of a sudden come right over to where I am. Then basically just Swordmaster, self-explanatory. Yeah, so basically though, I see that, and I even see basically from Demanchi, basically Bell's skill. I'm like, huh, well, um, as I look at basically Hestia, she's like, you're, you're, you're the new, you're, you're a person from another world that was kind of have some and she looks basically at Beto, shouts here, and Narvel, and they basically just wave high at her. And then she just faints. And I'm like, uh, goddess? Hey, goddess! I think we're gonna leave this off, everyone. Well, definitely no, not just me. It'd be like, shout here, just sigh. Narvel would just come over and be like, she only fainted. And basically, just about be like, well, that's an interesting reaction. And I'm just like, yeah. Oh, what are we going to do when Belle comes back? Yeah, so basically, that's where I'm going to leave it off, everyone. Hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye. Uh.